In this video, let's look at how to solve this limit problem. First, we plug in x equal to 2 to the original function, and we would get 0 over 0. In limit, that is called an indeterminate form, which means the limit cannot be determined at the moment. And be careful, the limit is not also not zero in this case. Therefore, we need some other methods to solve this problem. We'll introduce two methods here. The first method here is to factor both the numerator and the denominator. Because in here we see on top and the bottom of the fraction, we have a polynomial. And it's not at the simplest form yet. So let's see what will happen if we factor it out and cancel the common part as well. x to the third minus 8. That is going to be equal to x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. And x squared minus 4, that is equal to x minus 2 times x plus 2. And now we can rewrite our limit function. That as x goes to 2, on top we have x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. And on the bottom, we have x minus 2 times x plus 2. So we can cancel out the common terms. Then we get x squared plus 2x plus 4 over x plus 2. Now let's plug in x plus 2 and see what happens. And then we would get 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4 over 2 plus 2. Which gives us 3. And 3 is the answer for this question. As you can see, this is So next time, if you have a polynomial both on the numerator and on the denominator, try to simplify and factor out the common term first. That should help you to get to the final answer. And let's look at a different approach. If you have learned the concept of derivative, then you might want to try this method too, which is going to be L'Hopital's rule. So the reason we can use this rule is because we have a 0 over 0 when plugging in x equal to 2. And that, we said earlier, is called an indeterminate form. And 
And what L'Hopital rule tell us is that if we take the limit of x equal to c, on top we have a function f of x, on the bottom we have g of x, and if the limit of this is an indeterminate form, then we know the limit of our original function is equal also equal to the derivative of the top and bottom function, which in here we have fx prime. On the bottom we have gx prime. And it will all make sense, I promise. So for our example, is that and this rule is actually quite easy to use and really simplify your calculation. As our question to use our question as an example, we have x to the third minus eight over x squared minus four. To take the derivative of the top and bottom separately, we would get the derivative of the top function we have 3x squared. Derivative of bottom function here, we have 2x. And let's simplify the top and bottom. We would have the limit of, as x goes to 2, we cancel out the common terms. And then we have 3x over 2. And plug in x goes to 2, we have 3 times 2 over 2, which is equal to 3. And now we have used a different method, also show that the limit for this question is 3 as well.